Hello, it's story time with Louie and Sophie and we're reading chapter two of Stuart Little. It's called Home Problems is the name of the chapter and it says, Stuart was also helpful when it came to ping pong. The littles liked ping pong, but the balls had a way of rolling under chairs, sofas and radiators. And this meant that the players were forever stooping down and reaching under things. Stuart soon learned to chase balls and it was a great sight to see him come out from under a hot radiator, pushing a ping pong ball with all his might, the perspiration, that means the sweat, running, rolling down his cheeks. The ball, of course, was almost as high as he was, and he had to keep and he had to throw his whole weight against it in order to keep it rolling. Here's the picture. The Littles had a grand piano in their living room, which was all right, except that one of the keys was a sticky key and didn't work properly. Mrs. Little said she thought it must be the damp weather, but I don't see how it could be the damp weather, for the key had been sticking for about four years, during which time there had been many bright, clear days. But anyway, the key stuck and was a great inconvenience to anyone trying to play the piano. It bothered George particularly when he was playing the scarf dance, which was rather lively. It was George who had the idea of stationing Stuart inside the piano to push the key up the second it was played. Here's another picture. This is Stuart standing inside a piano, holding up the key that was sticking. This was no easy job for Stuart as he had to crouch down between the felt hammers so he wouldn't get hit on the head. But Stuart liked it just the same. It was exciting inside the piano, dodging about and the noise was quite terrific. Sometimes after a long session, he would emerge quite deaf as though he had just stepped out of an airplane out of, after a long journey. And it would be some little time before he really felt normal again. Mr. and Mrs. Little often discussed Stuart quietly between themselves when he wasn't around, for they had never quite recovered from the shock and surprise of having a mouse in the family. He was so very tiny and he presented so many problems to his parents. Mr. Little said that for one thing, there must be no references to mice in their conversation. He made Mrs. Little tear from the nursery songbook the page about the three blind mice, see how they run. I don't want Stuart to get a lot of notions in his head, said Mr. Little. I should feel badly to have my son growing up fearing that a farmer's wife was going to cut off his tail with a carving knife. It is such things that make children dream bad dreams when they go to bed at night. Yes, replied Mrs. Little, and I think we had better start thinking about the poem, Twas the Night Before Christmas, when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. I think it might embarrass Stuart to hear mice mentioned in such a belittling manner. Belittling means to put him down. I really have to start harvesting some words better. That's right, said her husband, but what shall we say when we come to that line in the poem? We'll have to say something. We just can't say, "'Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring." That doesn't sound complete. It needs a word to rhyme with house. Interesting that he should be saying that when we're studying poetry. What about louse, asked Mrs. Little, or grouse, said Mrs. Mr. Little. I suggest souse, remarked George, who had been listening to the conversation from across the room. It was decided that louse was the best substitute for mouse. So when Christmas came around, Mrs. Little carefully rubbed out the word mouse from the poem and wrote the word louse. And Stuart always thought the poem went this way. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a louse. The thing that worried Mr. Little most was the mouse hole in the pantry. The hole had been made by some mice in the days before the Littles came to live in the house, and nothing had been done to, about stopping it up. Mr. Little was not at all sure that he understood Stuart's real feeling about the mouse hole. He didn't know where the hole led to, and it made him uneasy to think that Stuart might someday feel the desire to venture into it. After all, it, he does look a good deal like a mouse, said Mr. Little to his wife, and I've never seen a mouse yet that didn't like to go into a hole. And there's the drawing of the mouse hole that the littles are afraid that Stuart might want to look into and investigate someday. And that is the end of chapter two. Chapter three is called Washing Up, and we'll read it tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.